All right. Hey team, welcome to our weekly Monday night huddle. I'm Amber Ike and so excited that you guys jumped on for our special treat tonight. Um, but before I introduce our guests tonight, just a couple quick announcements for our team. Um, first and foremost, this is something new that I want us to start doing and I'm really excited about it. But tonight during training, during our huddle, um, take a selfie, take um, a picture of your notes, take a picture of, you know, the screen or whatever, what have you. Um, and then I want you guys to use the hashtag journey toward diamond. So use the hashtag with our journey toward diamond and whatever you want to say about it. And then um, that will just be a fun way for us to keep track of training and all that good stuff. And for those of you that get this done by, let's say, you know, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow, those of you that post it with that hashtag, you will be entered for a fun little prize from me. And you have to use the hashtag and spell it correctly. Make sure you spell it correctly because I am going to search for that hashtag. So spelling is important in this one. Um, so that's going to be something fun we're going to start doing from time to time. Also, if you are in the Houston area, we are having our local team dinner this Thursday night at 7 p.m. at Grimaldi's. So bring your block, and we are going to be eating some pizza together. Um, if you haven't seen the information, just message me, and I'll make sure you get all the information. Um, but let us know if you plan on going so we can have the right amount of seats at the table prepared. And then also, you guys, I'm really excited about this one. We are going to be starting a book club for our entire team. This is for anyone that wants to grow, wants to invest in personal growth. Um, I am a firm believer that uh, leaders are readers. I think, or audio listeners, if that's you. So um, the first book we are doing, it starts August 8th. It's gonna be Monday nights at 8 p.m., so right before the huddle, probably about 30 minute discussion, so you get a little break before huddle. Um, and the first book we're doing is by Sarah Robbins, and it's Rock Your Network Marketing Business. It's on Amazon Prime right now for $12, so a great investment. And this was one of the books that really opened my eyes to the potential of network marketing and how it wasn't this elusive idea. It wasn't, you know, just these hot shots out there doing it. It was a normal kindergarten teacher living the life of her dreams because of network marketing. Uh, not to ruin the book for you, but <laughs> um, so if you want to be involved in that, go ahead and get your book purchased and we start that August 8th. So without further ado, you guys, I am so excited that you guys jumped on tonight for our huddle. Um, my friend and my upline, Nikki Hinkle, she is our diamond upline, is going to be sharing tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, about a topic that I really believe it's not talked about a lot. Um, and it's a topic that I really believe will not only take your business to another level, if you really take the time to listen and grow in this area, but it'll also help in all areas of your life. This is something that is really, um, important in your relationships, your outlook on life, your, you know, outlook on yourself and everything like that. So really excited to hear from her tonight. Um, but without further ado, Nikki, thank you so much for joining us tonight, hon. Yes, thanks for having me. So Amber wanted me to talk to you all about shame. So super exciting, right? <laughs> so we were, we were I was talking to her a little earlier this week about this topic, and that's when she was like, you have to jump on my heddle and talk to them about what you're saying to me. So I want to start this first with a little disclaimer so I don't have to keep quoting her, but I have learned everything that I have about this topic from Brene Brown. She's my favorite author. She's written Daring Greatly and Rising Strong, Power of Vulnerability. She has several amazing books. So several times throughout my talk tonight, I will be quoting her, but I just want to kind of put that disclaimer now so I don't keep having to say, Brene said, Brene said. <laughs> so, so first I want to start first by this is by discussing shame with you. There's three major topics I'm going to talk to y'all tonight about. That's shame, vulnerability, and scarcity. So shame is that feeling of, of when you feel unworthy of love and belonging. One thing that she says is that if you put shame in a Petri dish and you douse it with secrecy, silence, and judgment, 
it will grow exponentially. But if you put shame in a petri dish and you douse it with vulnerability, it will die. So shame is this web of unattainable conflicting expectations that we put on ourselves that we feel like we have to live up to that we are it's something that we're supposed to do and it can be one of life's biggest straitjackets for you because we put these expectations on ourselves that we cannot live up to and because we cannot live up to them we suddenly define ourselves and feel unworthy of love and belonging so when i talk to you about shame tonight i want you to be careful not to confuse shame with guilt because guilt is a very good emotion and guilt it spurs on action and change guilt says i did something bad where shame says i am bad so shame is that feeling that will define you and it is actually the enemy to change when we feel shame we don't tend to change the situation we tend to sit here and dwell in that emotion and let it consume us we're guilt we're spurred to action and spurred to 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 make amends so so what our goal here is to help you if you are living in shame or you are feeling shame about something to help you move past shame so this doesn't hold you back in your business so how do we get out of this trap of being stuck in shame and vulnerability is one of the keys to getting out of that shame so what is vulnerability it is uncertainty risk and emotional exposure so i want to ask you when you think about vulnerability and when you think about yourself being truly vulnerable with people does it feel like weakness to you because I know when I very first started reading about this and hearing about this, it's one of those things that in ourselves, it feels like weakness. But when we see other people do it, it sounds like courage. And so remember as you're doing this, while you feel very weak because you are exposing yourself and you are bearing your soul to the listener on the other side, it sounds courageous. And what you're actually doing is you're inspiring somebody else. So, Vulnerability is, it is the birthplace of joy, love, belonging, creativity, faith, innovation, and change. If you think about all of these things, they're impossible without vulnerability. You can't love without being vulnerable. You can't have faith in a higher being and a higher God without believing in the unknown and, and putting yourself out there and believing in something that you can't see. You can't have creativity without putting out work that has never been done before, without showing something that is different than everything else. All of these things require a very high level of vulnerability. And it, you, and it's so it, it's very, very important to learn to practice this skill. Now, foreboding joy, I'm gonna kinda on the flip side, foreboding joy is a symptom of losing our capacity of vulnerability. So it is that feeling of, I don't wanna count my chickens before my eggs hatch, or it is when we feel compelled to beat vulnerability to the punch. Because one of the biggest things with being vulnerable is, um, is we're afraid of being hurt. And so in order to do that, in order to not be hurt, we tend to put up our, you know, human nature is to put our guard up so that, that we, we don't feel those feelings. It is, it's almost easier if we live in disappointment, kind of live a life of disappointment, than to feel disappointment in the moment. And so instead of being feeling that hurt, that foreboding joy, what we will do, like for, let's say you're close to hitting a rank, you're not gonna push for it because you're afraid if you try and you put it out there and you tell your upline, hey, I'm gonna push for gold this month and then you miss it, that you have failed. And suddenly you're in this feeling of shame, of unworthiness because you didn't hit that goal that you set out to hit. And that is that foreboding joy that we're trying to move past. And so how do you get, how do you get past this foreboding joy? Like what keeps us, like what is the biggest hindrance that is keeping us from being vulnerable? Because foreboding joy is the opposite of, of vulnerability. And the one thing that keeps us from being vulnerable is scarcity. So scarcity is when we live in this culture of we're not enough. So I'm not pretty enough. I'm not good enough. 
I don't have a big enough network. I am not, you know, I don't do enough training calls or I'm not a good enough leader. There are so many things that we say to ourselves. I'm not extraordinary enough that will destroy our business. And because we think these things, we don't want to be vulnerable and share. And I'm going to get a little spiritual with y'all for just a second. Um, I heard this story at church a few months ago. Kristen Welch runs this charity called Mercy House. And it's here, it's a local one here in the Houston area. And she was at our church talking to us. And she was on a mission trip this spring in, Nai in the Nairobi slums in Kenya. And she was walking through the Nairobi slums and this boy invites her into his home. And she said he was probably about the age of 10. And she walked into the door, the doorway, it's just this open doorway in this little hut. And there was this boy about 10 years old and he was there with his three younger siblings and they were an orphaned household. So he was the head of the household. And she painted this picture for us and said that the, the you know, the ground was just dirt. And in the corner, there was a, a toilet that was just a hole dug into the ground. And then in the other corner, there was a bowl and like a pot where you could tell that was their eating area. And that was all of their possessions. I mean, this is the greatest form of scarcity that you can imagine for this, this family. They had no they had no parents, they had no possessions. And the boy was grinning from ear to ear as she walks into this home. And she said that in a moment of just complete brokenness, she said to him, why are you so happy? You have nothing. And he looked at her with his smile and said, but ma'am, I have Jesus. And when she was telling the story, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks that we live in this life of feeling like we don't have enough. We aren't enough. And we're chasing after more, 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 more. And we're missing the point. You know, we're missing the bigger point. And I thought, you know, when I was writing my notes for this tonight, I was reminded of this story because not only are we missing the point, it is the most beautiful picture of vulnerability. When you think about it, this boy had full scarcity. He had every reason to feel shame and he didn't. He invited her in with pride and excitement and he, he was just joyful and excited. And here was this white, rich, privileged woman walking the streets and he pulled her right in. And it's, it's beautiful when you see it in somebody else. And I can think countless times, several different times in my life where some, and, and I'm embarrassed to say this, but someone's knocked on my door and I look out the window. I can remember one time specifically, I looked out the window and that person standing on my doorstep was someone I loved, but I had a basket of clean clothes on my couch waiting to be folded. I had toys all over the floor and last night's dinner was still on the stove and you could smell the leftover dinner through the house. And I didn't answer the door because I felt ashamed that I felt unworthy to let my friend in the door, you know, and it, it's sad. It's sad that we let these things consume us, that we let the thoughts of people, what others are going to think of us. And we already, I didn't even give that person a chance. I just assumed she would judge me from the state of my home. And scarcity is the biggest liar to us. It is going to tell you you are not enough. It's not only going to tell you you are not enough, it's going to tell you other people think you are not enough. And that's the biggest lie of all. It's not just going to destroy your business, guys. It's going to destroy your entire life. One quote that you're going to hear often with Plexus that people posted a lot and little memes is comparison is the thief of joy. And I've always loved that quote because it's so true. But I was thinking more about it tonight. The reason why it's the thief of joy is because when we compare, we instantly think of our human scarcity, right? We think about how they have something different than what we have. They have painted this perfect picture that we can never live up to. And it's a thief because our reaction to scarcity is to shut the door, to not be vulnerable. Don't let people in. Don't let them see the dirty dishes. Be guarded. That's what scarcity tells us, and it stills that vulnerability. Which going back, remember when I talked earlier, vulnerability is the birthplace of joy. So comparison is the thief of joy. But what else is vulnerability the birthplace of? Love, belonging, creativity, faith, innovation, change. 
So comparison, it's going to still love. It's going to still belonging. It's going to still creativity, faith, innovation, change. It, it's going to steal so much from you. If you let, if you compare your business to other people's businesses around you and you cannot find joy in other people's success, that will be one of your biggest hindrances in this industry. I want to end this by talking to you about my favorite, favorite quote. And I've, Y'all might have heard me say it before. It's Theodore Roosevelt's quote, The Man in the Arena. And as I read this, I want you to listen to the words very carefully. There's so many different amazing little nuggets in this quote that you can pull from it. Um, so I'm going to read it to y'all first. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. And the thing I love about this quote is it's not about winning or losing. It's just about showing up and being seen and trying. It is the definition of vulnerability at its finest to show up and be seen, to give it your all. And it is terrifying sometimes to draw our line in the sand and say, I'm really gonna give Plexus a try, and I'm gonna believe that this could be something life-changing for my family. And that's, a, that's scary to put out there, and that takes vulnerability, that takes getting in the arena. And there is only one certainty I can give you if you get in this arena with us, if you were willing to draw that line, you may have even been in this for several years. If you're willing to draw the line and say, okay, now I'm really gonna get in it. I'm really gonna believe in this. The only certainty I can give you is that you will get your ass kicked. I wish I could tell you your certainty is you will go gold or you will go something, but we can't promise you that. That's all we can promise you is that it's hard and you're going to have haters and you're going to have hard times, but it's going to be worth it because you're going to feel something other than comfortable. You don't want to live in that comfortable state. Now, if there's only one thing you gain from this talk, <laughs> I, I want you to remember this, and maybe I, it's one of those things I have to write on a mirror or keep reminding myself, is if you're not willing to show up and get in this arena with me, I'm not interested in hearing your feedback. So you have to remember that when you're listening to other people. Constructive criticism, constructive criticism is really is important from someone else who's in the arena. If they are not there, they are not the critic that counts. If they are in the cheap seats, cheap seats watching you work, don't listen to what they have to say because they are just a critic. Don't let them beat you down. So I'm gonna recap this a little bit because I feel like I've kind of jumped from talk, topic to topic. <laughs> but starting with shame, shame is that feeling that you are unworthy of love and belonging. It's crippling. To move past shame, we require a level of vulnerability. But vulnerability can be very difficult because it brings up those feelings of scarcity. So what we're trying to do is move past those feelings of scarcity by not letting the critic count, by not feeling less than, by not comparing. Instead, we want to focus on your strengths. Do what you love. Believe in yourself. Let the world know that you believe in yourself. And once you open yourself up and you start to be vulnerable a little bit, like it becomes more comfortable and more normal and you want to do it more and more. <laughs> find somebody, if you don't already have this, find somebody that keeps you accountable that you can be fully vulnerable and raw and honest with at all times. So when you have feelings of discouragement, you can talk to them about that. This business, guys, it's a journey. It's not a race. But I'm just so happy that you're all on this journey with me. So thank you for letting me share with y'all tonight. So hopefully some of that makes some sense, y'all. Um, I feel like we just had church up in here. <laughs> <laughs> We're joining us for Monday Night Church, guys. I love it. <laughs> so good. I told you guys you would want to be on 
And thanks for bursting my bubble, Nikki. I promised them rainbows and butterflies. I didn't tell them it was going to be hard. So. Oh, you did? <laughs> we said shame. The hell is the rainbows? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So good. I just wanted to cover a couple of things that stood out to me and then, um, we'll open it up for questions in a minute. But, um, I love how you said vulnerability. It feels like weakness when we do it, but it looks like courage when someone else does it. That is so true. Like when you think of somebody who's courageous, it's because they're being vulnerable. And to us, we're like, Oh my gosh, like that's amazing. But when we're in that position, we're like, holy cow, I'm letting the world know that I might fail at this, you know? Um, it's just funny how we're so egocentric. Like, we're just so focused on our own, how we come across to the world. But everyone else is doing the same thing with themselves, you know? Like, can we just blow it out of proportion. Like, oh, everyone's looking at me. And they're like, no, they're looking at themselves. So, um, and I liked how you said vulnerability is the birthplace of joy. And it just made me think like going back to church, like Jesus was born a baby, like the most vulnerable, you know what I mean? Like the most vulnerable you can get, like that was pretty wise of God to even show us from the beginning, like vulnerability is a part of life. It's a part of relationships. It's a part of really making an impact on the world around you, you know? Um, so that just made me think of how like even Jesus was brought into the world, like was a place of complete vulnerability. So love that. Um, I'm going to end the recording and then we can open it up for some questions. So oh, wait, maybe.